Hello again. It's finally time to stamp out the Anus Empire properly. Which realistically might be pronounced Enus, but I've come this far saying Anus, so I won't stop now. Um, anyway, they've taken so much from Badger. Her home, her family, her nose. So with the Holdfast running self-sufficiently and largely secure from outside threats, it's time for her to leave on her final conquest. Well, actually, she's, she's going to hang around and meditate for a very long time first. And also, we need to strip her moral guide role and give it to Miller. This is to lower her expectations to minimize the chance of catastrophic mental breaks while she's out and about burning down the Empire. So she meditates. Raiders arrive occasionally and are burned to death, as is the tradition, but for the next in-game year or so, she meditates until she learns to absorb corpses for a permanent buff to her neural heat limit, which is why we've been keeping all of these around. This will help her fling more fireballs without frying her own brain. Putting a few Silent levels into her stats will also help with this. Whilst hanging around here I also realised that an edged weapon probably isn't the smartest thing to take against the Empire, as blunt weapons have a much easier time dealing with most armours, at least until you can get your hands on a really special sword. Perhaps we'll find one later. Alright, so an infestation, a prison break and a marriage later, a loot trader arrives. Bearing some, well, pretty irresistible armour, actually. I'm willing to sell the majority of our horses for a set of marine armour and a cataphract helmet. Should I have cataphract armour in a medieval Rimworld playthrough? I don't know, probably not, but when life gives you armour that's impervious to the Anus Empire's weaponry, make Anus aid, I say. So I was waiting for some kind of high quality mace to show up when I realised that it might be wiser to just, you know, go and take one from someone else. But first, Komodo's hand just got bitten off by a warg before Badger could arrive and save her. Uh, well, whatever, she doesn't need to. And then Badger also has to quickly burn some more Neanderthals to death before finally heading out to go and do the thing. The thing, in case you didn't know by now, is taking on the mantle of death and its white horse. Walking through forest and glen, and deserts, and tundra, you get the point. She'll roam this whole continent in search of Anus Empire strongholds to snuff them out. Or, well, light them up is more accurate. It'll take her about four days to get to the first settlement, which isn't too bad. A breeze, really. With the magic of editing, she's already there. They don't really put up much of a fight, though I'm not sure how much of a fight you can realistically expect from a load of medieval folk when they're put up against a fire witch in a spacesuit. So, okay, on to the next. Almost ten days of travel. This was much smoother when I did it with Artemis, the elven super soldier, because unlike Badger, he didn't need to sleep. Anyway, she's nearly there, and oh, how lovely, it's snowing. Before her attack, she'll meditate at the local monument. It's pretty important to do this before leaving after an attack, actually, because she's not particularly dangerous with zero side use. A small raid shows up to the Holdfast and is deflected by the traps, so it's good to know that they work, but there should probably be more of them, so we'll lengthen that hallway significantly sometime soon. Back to Badger. The Anus folk have come out to get her. I suppose a scout saw her sat on the ground out there. Anyway, the outcome is quite predictable. They got blowed up. A mere two days travel to the next victims. So after a short word from this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN, she'll get there. Using the internet without a VPN is a lot like going outdoors, which is to say frightening and potentially quite dangerous. Luckily then, ExpressVPN encrypts all of your traffic so that even a hacker with a supercomputer can't get into your stuff. I use ExpressVPN on my phone because public Wi-Fi is like the Wild West where instead of quick drawing revolvers, the cowboys type on laptops really disturbingly quickly and want your logins and financial details. But uh, okay, this metaphor might be a bit stretched. You get the point though. So why ExpressVPN? Well, ExpressVPN is quick, it doesn't log your activity and it's easy to use. Yes, even you could do it. So do it, using my link for three extra months free expressvpn.com slash hazor, which will also be in the description below. You don't have to type it. Okay, back to it. It's very woody here, which should add literal fuel to Badger's fire, but once again I forgot to have her meditate after the last settlement, so she needs to do it here. But quite quickly they figure her out and come running. 
Thankfully though, the quite powerful self-explosion side cast is pretty cheap and helps deal with a lot of the chaff. Then it only takes one or two kills in melee to send the rest running. After butchering the livestock, as is also tradition, Badger can loot their stuff, which includes a plasteel longsword, a weapon with extremely high DPS and just enough penetration to get the job done versus most armor. A very good find. She'll rest up and remember to meditate this time before heading out again on a five-day journey to the next place. Along the way, she's ambushed by a single impid. I've never actually had a caravan ambush of more than one enemy. I suppose it doesn't use the caravan's value, but rather just the number of people in it. Anyway, obviously they're not a real threat, but they did set Badger on fire, which she'll use her last herbal medicine to heal up. But then I realized that the stuff just grows out of the ground, so before leaving the ambush site, I have her harvest all of the wild heal root, and then meditate over some rocks. All right, next. Once they started running, I used this poor guy to check on this sword's armor penetrating capabilities, which seemed pretty good. Badger is able to stab him repeatedly in the head despite him wearing a full helmet. Nice. And so after executing the cattle, once again, she rests. Back at the Holdfast, there's Toxic Fallout, which is annoying, and now there's also Slavers, which is also annoying. Or the Itikin lost a toe in the combat, which I'm sure sucks, but it probably beats being sold into slavery. So worth it, I'd say. Badger is almost at her next destination when a most fearsome threat attacks the caravan. Two raccoons. Right, this is a good opportunity to stop and meditate anyway, before continuing to the next base. Which during the combat I notice contains a cam call. Wait, it contains our cam call. Nani? You know, this one from the thumbnails. He appears fully indoctrinated to the anus ways, eschewing his incredible lightning powers even when faced with his young apprentice Badger's magical might. Which, uh, well, is, is very lucky, frankly. That dude has lightning bolted a whole lot of people to death. So in case anyone was wondering how Cam Cole the Lightning Wizard's journey ends, it's in a fiery explosion at the hands of Badger. Perhaps he didn't recognize her. She's changed quite a lot in the years since Badgerhold fell. Or perhaps he did and has just found a new family to protect here. Whichever reality you choose to believe, he's dead now, put to rest. Perhaps this should have woken Badger up from her violent fugue. If even Cam Cole has taken completely to the ways of the Anus Empire, can they really be so terrible a people? Uh, yeah, no, they're all going to burn. This changes nothing for Badger, who sleeps quite comfortably to the sounds of burning buildings. We'll leave her to that for now, because back at the Holdfast, Trap Hallway finally needs expanding. Raids are getting a bit scary. They're sort of just generally struggling a bit back there. Work isn't getting done very efficiently, and occasionally I find them low on food. And in case you were wondering where all the bones for resetting the traps come from, well, it's... it's the ducks. Sorry, ducks. Anyway, I can easily put them back on track by managing the colony some more, but I have a conquest to oversee. There are six anus settlements left on the map. Let's burn some of them down. One... Two... Uh... Okay, the journey to three is a really long one. This honestly felt like it might take the remainder of my adult life at the time. Not even that classic video of a woman getting absolutely domed by a watermelon could help pass the time. Back home, the Impids attack the base, one of the only factions still hostile, but the traps didn't struggle because they don't wear armor after all. So Badger continues very slowly, progressing towards... Uh, wait, shit, some ducks are on fire. Uh... Anyway... Okay, Badger is finally on location and ready to behead a whole lot of people in a very short period of time. It's what she does best. Well, it's either that or burning buildings, it's a toss-up, really. She sits on top of a marble steel to meditate and heads off on a blessedly short walk to the next settlement. But you already know what happens there. What's more pressing is that an infestation is bubbling up in the salt mines back at the base. Infestations are a pretty dangerous threat back in medieval times if you don't have a powerful mage around to save the day. Most weapons struggle to damage Mega Spa- Oh, dicks, they just beheaded Cuzwaste. And, and now Miller is down. And glasses. And Orr. And Komodo. And Kalkolia. They're all dead or dying. 
the holdfast has fallen to a small swarm of insects. Badger, of course, psychically feels the pain of her loved ones, and this upsets her. Like, a lot. But she's still got a job to finish. There's only one settlement left to raise before this conquest is finished. They sent a lone warrior, a champion perhaps, to ambush Badger's caravan, and they were beheaded before I could even zoom in on them, so that's a good start. Once she's finally there, she does pretty much the same thing that she did everywhere else. It didn't feel any different. There's no release, despite the finality of the message, Anus Empire has been defeated. And yes, it is quite difficult to keep seriously saying Anus Empire, but you work with the cards you're dealt in RimWorld sometimes. Um, anyway, right. It's over. The Empire is crushed. Everyone except the Impids and the Savage Kingdoms loves Badger for what she's done. Was it worth it? I'm not sure. Let's have a beer and consider. The Anus Empire has fallen, and all of Badger's lost friends and family almost certainly fell with it. The Holdfast and the relationships it fostered are lost to time. Had Badger never left the Holdfast, those people would probably still be alive. Her own sister was cut down by giant insects because she needed fiery revenge. No, this wasn't worth it. And neither is continuing to wander this blasted land. So the armor comes off and into a fire of her own creation she walks. Badger and everyone she ever knew is dead. The end. Thanks for watching. Remain indoors.